Oh, 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 I remember the days of 2.1 when this game actually had <laughs> good content. Now it's just full of casual players and all these uh, cartel market expansions. Uh, yes, po Pwnstar212. Yes, I saw your comment in Gen Chat. What makes you think this game doesn't have any content? Oh, look, a casual player. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. Uh, yeah, sir. Well, if you uh, weren't aware, that back in the update 2.1, we received uh, the Nightmare Operations and Dread Fortress and Dread Palace. You just wouldn't understand. It was before your time. No, no, I, I, I was there. I do remember. The continuous grinds, the exploits, all of those little stupid things. I don't really understand why you think the game was better then than it is now. <laughs> oh, 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 casual players like you make me laugh. No, no, back in the day we would receive actual content like bosses and things like that. Now we just get stupid races like dog rooters and <laughs> that stupid storyline with the, that, <laughs> that Valkor, you know, guy. <laughs> Well, if you don't like the direction of Star Wars The Old Republic, and you're not really willing to put the time in to try and improve it, why don't you just unsubscribe from the game? Oh, casual. No, the reason I am still subscribed is because I've put a lot of time into this game, and I don't want to see it go to waste. Well, why don't you just unsubscribe now, and then give the game another go in a couple of years' time, and perhaps maybe we'll have some newer operation content for you to try with your friends then. There's no point staying on the server and just shouting in gen chat to all these casual players and ruining their time as well as your own. Uh. Uh, uh, sh sh shut up, casual. What a genius. How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? It's Laura9 here again today with another video, and today we're going to be doing the top 10 uprisings in Star Wars The Old Republic. So sit back and prepare yourself for some serious Star Wars content. Starting with number 10. Alright guys, so coming in at number 10, my least favorite uprising so far is Trial and Error. And I know a lot of you are saying, but the rat ghoul thing is so cool. And it is. I do like the fact that you can turn into a rat ghoul. That is what makes this uprising, I think, somewhat tolerable. But overall, I just don't like it in general. Because each boss follows the same sort of attack pattern. All the bosses use AoEs as their primary form of DPS. And I don't like that too much. I'd rather they focused more on perhaps making each boss unique rather than all of them copy and paste of the last, but perhaps with slight alterations. I will perhaps argue that the second boss, Icar Ko and Nearest Ko, both have very interesting mechanics. The idea of having these sniper rifles that shoot these AoEs out is really interesting, but after doing the original AoE boss, the very first boss, which is Marlon Fenn, I think personally they should have perhaps toned down the AoEs in the second boss fight and made it more about perhaps dots or single target DPS. It would have made it much more interesting. Because honestly, I feel this uprising only tests two things, and that is your group's ability to sustain, so that requires having a tank and a healer, whilst also testing the group's positioning. So that means the group's ability to not stand in stupid, or to not stand in AoEs. So to conclude, I just don't like this uprising, especially if you use Group Finder, because you can always find a group with no sustainability, for example, a group with no tanks or healers. Number nine. Coming in at number nine is the Divided We Fall uprising. This uprising specifically, I don't like too much, but honestly, there are aspects to it I find somewhat enjoyable. I'd like to just start off by saying this uprising takes place in the work section on Coruscant. It is a rather cool uprising in premise. You go down there to defeat the Republic veterans who are protesting against the Alliance, and you end up, of course, killing them if you complete the uprising. Now, the reason I actually think this uprising is kind of okay is because they have this one section called Escape the Room, where there's a locked gate, and you have to basically button press to stop this poison from pouring out. And then once you've done that, you go into another room where you have to hold your position against this commander and a whole bunch of her forces. It's just a load of fun for a new group. So I don't like it, but it's not that bad of an uprising. Number eight. Taking the eighth spot on our list today is the Fractured Uprising. The reason this is number eight is because I honestly like this flashpoint. I feel there are some aspects to it that feel very three-dimensional. You spend a lot of it jumping around the higher levels of this Imperial Station whilst fighting ads and various other mobs. Having these catwalks up above in the Imperial Station definitely does highlight this uprising and make it much more memorable than most. Not only are these catwalks very interesting, but you get to grappling hook or jetpack or force jump over between each catwalk and then fight a new wave of adds. Just that bit alone is just so interesting and immersive, it definitely adds a whole new level to the actual uprising itself. In addition, this uprising is actually much more ad-focused than it is boss-focused, and I like that purely because an uprising is supposed to be this quick little thing you do. It's not meant to be too difficult, it's just meant to be some fun, and that is sort of what Fractured does represent. You go through it, 
kill these rather easy to kill adds and then you get to a final boss that honestly can be a little bit of a struggle for pug groups and inexperienced players the boss comes in two stages you have lord anril who is the sith master and has his sith apprentices he does very little damage to the actual player but he casts a move called force storm which is a moving aoe that the players have to sort of make a habit of avoiding or they're going to take 20k damage per tick then there are also intimidating adds in the second phase so this uprising is good for players who want a quick run and then a really hard boss fight at the end number seven all right so taking the spotlight today number seven is the uprising inferno i thought inferno was pretty damn cool it's located on Ordmantel, and it is a really cool uprising dedicated to rogue sith lords and i thought the sith lords actually included in this were really cool you have lord rad who's supposed to be this really powerful sith in control of lots of acolytes the fact that they're on ord mantel is really cool in lore because it suggests that the empire actually retreated to ord mantel during these a cool invasion which i think was pretty sweet so the law there is just on point, but I think we should focus more so on the mechanics here. When you actually fight Lord Rad himself, he has some pretty damn cool mechanics. He has these Sith Acolytes that spawn around him and Sith Adepts, both of which use various moves and your DPS have to go and check to make sure certain adds are down at certain times. On top of that, the actual boss uses a Force Choke, which is a form of CC, and you can break out of it, of course. But if you're doing it on the harder mode, there are much more complicated ways of getting out of that Force Choke, which I think is pretty damn cool. Overall, the Uprising has a very cool backstory to it. Unfortunately, they don't put much emphasis on it because it's an Uprising and they don't tend to try and push the narrative for Uprisings, but it is a very cool Uprising. Number 6 Taking the 6th spot on our list today, we have the Fire Frost Uprising located on the planet of Hoth. Now, the reason this is number 6 on our list today is because the entire fight consists of fighting the White Moor Pirates, which are a very well-known faction in the Star Wars The Old Republic universe, especially if you've done the Hoth storyline. On top of that, the actual final boss himself is called the Forge Master, and he has some very interesting mechanics. But to start off with the very first boss, we have the Refactored Battle Droid. And this boss is, again, an AoE boss. The majority of his moves are to do with either him shooting a cannon or ice falling from the ceiling. It's very fun and engaging and the players get to move around a lot and it's very positioning focused. But again, I am not too fond when they have more than one AoE boss. Which brings us to our next boss, the JSMW1 Walker. And this is not a very fun boss either. You have four turrets positioned around the place. The boss will walk around and use various red AoEs and will use a line AoE that does central damage. It's not... Too much fun, but once you defeat the walker, you get to fight the actual Forge Master himself. And he's a pretty interesting boss. He has a close range sort of spray and pray mechanic. It's very difficult. And um, he has a few droids that appear and do some extra damage on top of that. So the actual fight, in essence, is somewhat fun. So that's why it's number six. Number five. Okay, so taking the halfway point on our list today is one of my favourite uprisings of all time, purely because of the location, and that is done and dusted on Tatooine. Now, the reason I like this uprising as much as I do is because the idea behind it is that it's an outpost or an enclave filled with various raiders and smugglers, and the objective is to kill these bandit leaders and put an end to their small little rebellious camp on Tatooine. To focus in on the bosses specifically here, I'd like to just say something about Jail Qualo. He's the very first boss. I like the sort of mechanic behind him where he will summon various adds that get stronger progressively until you conclude with the enslaved sandworm. The second boss, Crack Shock Aggie, also has some really damn cool mechanics. The AoEs are great from her grenades, and she has a really damn cool laser that tells you to get behind cover, and I think that mechanic's really cool in itself. But my favorite boss in the Uprising is Rakesh the Fool. He is a Deshade that basically stands on the top of a building to the side of the Uprising, and he will do massive burst damage on the tank. And and personally, because I tanked this uprising when I ran it, I thought it was really awesome sitting there seeing my health bar just spaz out all the time, going all the way back up to full, all the way down to the bottom. It is a very engaging fight, and I thought it was really enjoyable. Number four. The runner-up on our list today is the Trench Runner Uprising that takes place on the planet of Denova. It is in the exact same location as the Explosive Conflict Operation. The idea is that it has now become no man's land because both the Alliance and the Republic and the Empire... All of them don't have control over this land now, so it has become a place for Republic renegades to try and protest your alliance. So you have to go there and deal with the facility and get back the Baradium mines as you did originally in the Explosive Conflict. So it's, it's looped around again. Basically, you're killing even more traders, you're dealing with even more trash, and the idea is you have to sort of push your way 
through these ads to eventually get to the final boss, which is a hover tank with a commander. Now, when you're actually sitting there killing all these ads, it is very interesting for the player because all the ads actually do a significant amount of damage. There are various sniper ads that do burst you down really quickly. You then, of course, have tank mobs, which are these robots and droids, and then you have Republic commandos falling down. And the ads alone is what makes this uprising stand out as much as it does. Now, there is also the matter of the final boss, and I feel that personally, this final boss is what has made this number four. Now, you, of course, destroy the tank. That's not really too difficult. You have to dodge a few AoEs, nothing too hard there. But the actual final boss itself has a 30 second deeps timer so you have to just smash your damage at that boss until it goes down you only have 30 seconds to do it and it is a very intense moment of the uprising and is very interesting so that is why this is number four on my list but i'd just like to clarify i am not happy that this is a complete retexture but that's another story number three coming in at number three the bronze medal goes to the crimson fang uprising this takes place on Port Nowhere, which is a ship filled with smugglers and various mercenaries. The idea is the Alliance commander has to go through and defeat the raiders or the mercenaries that are trying to upcome and overthrow the Alliance. Now the reason that the Crimson Fang Uprising takes the Bronze Medal on our list today is because I see it as more of a flashpoint because it has four bosses rather than the usual three or two that most other uprisings have. This boss fight specifically, the dual one-shot Mesoc, is a very interesting fight in general because players have to deal with the boss while also watching ads and paying attention to button pushes. There are buttons that spawn on all the vents and you have to push the button to get the boss to come down so you can do progressive damage to him. While all that's going on, your tank has to sort of switch between ads and control the ads as much as possible. Following that, you then have the boss Takarusko, who does progressive AoE damage in a similar fashion, but instead of just shooting random shots everywhere, he does like an aerial bombardment similar to the Bounty Hunter, and I think that's what makes it really interesting. On top of that, you have to pay attention to various ads that spawn, and you have to deal with landmines on the ground, which is, of course, a very interesting mechanic. My very favourite feature of this uprising is the final mechanic where the final boss will reach below 20% HP and she will drop purple circles below every player. These purples will then overwhelm the player and do progressive damage if you stand still, so you have to basically keep up the mobility, and it is why I really like this intense uprising. Number 2 Taking the silver medal on our list today, we have the landing party uprising. Now, the reason I like this uprising so much is because it takes place on the beautiful planet of Ricarda Prime. Now, I really like the fact that the Zakul have come to this planet to sort of create a militia here to stand up against the Alliance. And I really do like the fact that all the boss fights in this uprising are very unique and very on point in terms of mechanics. I'd like to start off by saying that this planet in general is incredibly beautiful. I have a very nostalgic love for it. And of course, I did really enjoy the Forged Alliance version in the Flashpoint. And I'm glad that they brought the planet back just for us in this uprising. Moving on to the actual bosses themselves now. I do like all the bosses in this uprising, but I'd like to put a little bit more focus on the very last boss. Now, Commander Taysar is a crazy boss fight and is one of the hardest in the game to date. She has this really awesome form of stun that can catch players off guard. And when this stun occurs, these purple orbs basically spawn on the player and do progressive damage. There is no way of getting out of it. If you have been caught out by this stun, you are basically dead. So basically, I like this boss because it has merciless mechanics. And that is definitely why this is number two on my list. Number one. Taking the gold medal on our list today is my favorite uprising of all time. This is personal preference here. You guys may not agree, but it is the Destroyer of Worlds uprising. This uprising is so good, okay? The uprising takes place on the planet of Makeb and incorporates this ancient abomination called Jethul, who is arising from under the planet after the recent earthquakes it has been awakened, and Jedi Knight Master Adelaide has come to basically free this monster of its chains and help it conquer this weak and pathetic planet, and therefore threaten the Alliance. So we go here as a team of ninjas and karate warriors from the Alliance HQ to try and stop this crazy-ass Jedi. I really like this because it feels like it's a mission from Overwatch. You have to sit there and escort this droid payload and get it to the monster so you can blow it up, basically. Following that unique aspect to the Uprising, this Uprising also has some really awesome boss fights throughout, but at the very end in particular, you have this really awesome Jedi Knight who's just throwing her lightsabers around at you. You've got these really awesome force wave attacks in the form of a yellow AoE. She has this awesome debuff and a really damn cool dot where your damage taken is increased, your movement speed is reduced, and you have this ancient madness attack where she has this huge purple circle that just obliterates anyone who stands in it. So all of these moves together make this fight incredibly engaging, 
so much fun and really do keep the group on their toes in terms of difficulty. So there we have it guys, the top 10 uprisings in Star Wars The Old Republic. I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, it means a lot. And if you'd like to get involved in a comment or maybe discuss your personal top 10 uprisings, feel free to leave something in the comment section down below. Anyway, that's been my video. I really hope you guys have enjoyed and I will see you all next time. Bye guys.